We have a huge blizzard moving in. They're calling for the biggest snowstorm in 150 years. So I cracked open a cold one. <sighs> That wasn't planned. And we're gonna make stir fry. So um, we're celebrating our son Aaron's birthday and he loves stir fry. He requested stir fry. Let's do it. This is gonna be totally off the cuff and we're gonna try to do this in as few shots as possible. These are some of the ingredients today. I pulled things out. What do we have here? We have broccoli. We have some market side super blend, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kohlrabi, which I love, broccoli, carrot kale. Um, this is one of those super mixes with, with bok choy, kale and spinach, uh, white onion, red onion, green onion, there we go. <laughs> Shredded carrots, snow peas, ground beef, sliced onion, chicken breast, uh, what do we have, garlic, uh, serrano pepper, red bell pepper, orange bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, and that's like all of everything we got here. So over here to the Blackstone Griddle here, Hannah actually is behind the camera today, so shout out to our daughter Hannah for helping me out. I'm on high heat, I'm always on high heat, we're doing stir fry. This is 100% off the cuff, um, I love doing these kind of videos, and I figured why not? So this is gonna, you're gonna see me doing it the way I do it avocado oil which i love and if you're one of those oil technicians out there who are always trying to criticize oils it's a good choice because it's really really good at high heat my deal i always like to put oil on the griddle top before and after i cook look at that beautiful that's what keeps your griddle looking gorgeous i'm gonna come over here and grab some chicken like sue I'm gonna keep that in frame, there we go, because we're doing this off the cuff. Chicken's going down over here. This will be one of our dishes with chicken. Whoa, watch, look at my boot, Hannah. Ah, watch out, we'll just kind of tuck that under there. We'll forget that you ever saw that. And with this, we are gonna go with a little bit of extra avocado oil. A couple cloves of fresh garlic, gotta have garlic. And we're gonna get to it. So that instant sear, by the way, check it out. I'm gonna try to go as real a time as we can with this recipe today, folks. So let's see how that works out. Okay, and I'm literally going off the cuff. This is how we would normally eat stir fry here at our house. There wouldn't be a lot of planning involved and that's what we are doing right here. So let's come over here, Hannah. We'll go down with a little more of the avocado oil, which by the way, you know, it could be avocado oil. And for you, maybe it could be olive oil, cotton seed oil, grape seed oil. You kind of figure that out. All right, we're gonna go down with some of the orange. Yeah, let's do a lot. Orange bell pepper. And that is gonna be followed by our snow peas right there. That one looks kind of rotten. Whoop. And Let's see, that's gonna be good for now. So we're gonna get that uh, chicken. What a gorgeous sear, by the way. Check that out, right there, see that? That's only on the Blackstone, baby. I've been doing stir fry on the Blackstone griddles for lots and lots of years. Love it, love it, love it. We're gonna go ahead and just cross-contaminate here and I'll throw these spatulas away after this meal is done here. We're gonna incorporate the chicken and get those oils from the chicken, from the meat, mixed in with the oil from the veggies, okay? And this is gonna be our stir fry dish, numero uno. Right down there, let me grab some noodles. Uh, here we go, Hannah. So for this one, I've got a, a, a selection here, Hannah. I have udon noodles and I have Uncle Ben's jasmine. What do you think we should do in this recipe? Jasmine or udon? Udon. Let's do udon. Hannah asked for it, Hannah's getting it. So let's do it. We got the udon noodles. You get these in the Asian section of your grocery store. I happen to pick these up at Super Walmart, Walmart Supercenter. They come like this. I sort of break them up like so. These are pre-cooked, okay. People out there I know freaking out about the knife. Don't you worry. I have a knife and I'm using it. I take I take the risk. I'm not gonna sue any, always get these, um, uh, what do they call them? Safety sallies out there. The OSHA people, they're just freaking out when they see me using knives and stuff. So if you're a safety sally, come on, what are you doing watching my videos? 
Nothing I do is up to OSHA specs. All right, and another one here. So I like to get the udon noodles in there because they are going to soak up that avocado oil, and it's going to be delicious. Let's see. Let's uh, do one more pack of those, Hannah. Real time here, folks. I hope you're enjoying this. Real time. That should be enough on that recipe. Now let me switch places with you. So now I can see our chicken over here is a half, maybe a half, three quarters done. Immediately gonna mix that up there with our noodles because the noodles, they're pre-cooked, you know, they're done, they're ready to be consumed, but just like a hot dog, right? Nobody wants to eat a disgusting frozen, well, I guess as a kid I did, <laughs> a frozen hot dog. But yeah, we want to get, you know, get texture with those noodles. We want to get some color on them, and we want those juices to start mixing up in there. So I'm going to look at this right now, and then I'm going to come over here, Hannah. Come over here, and we are going to decide what else I want to put in that recipe. I, mm -hmm, let's see, a little green. Maybe I'll put a little green. So I'm going to put some of the uh, spinach, kale, and bok choy mixture in there. And we're going to come over here right now. I think we're probably at that mark. See, if I look at the... Most of the chicken is like good on the outside. There's a little bit of translucent, translucent, <laughs> translucent. I don't know what the uh, that tense of that word is. Translucent. There we go. You can see the noodles starting to get color, looking gorgeous. So as soon as I see that chicken is done, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna throw our greens in there, our spinach, bok choy, and uh, kale. So those are looking good. I think at this point. Things are slowing down, probably a good time to add some salt. So we're gonna go with a little bit of the Himalayan pink salt. Here we go. All right. And black pepper, black pepper definitely not a uh, spice that's traditionally used, you know, in a lot of Asian cooking, but it's used in our house. So uh, I think if you're into black pepper, you're gonna like it. Maybe it's just my twisted palate. Okay, looking good. Noodles are starting to take on some gorgeous color. I think we'll, pretty soon, I'm gonna crack open a piece of this chicken here. We're gonna look at it. Yeah, a little bit of pink inside that oil in the uh, chicken still. But speaking of oil, you can add, when you're doing stir fry, definitely add a little oil as you're cooking, if you want to. The big keys to stir fry cooking are high heat. Get the griddle as hot as you can and get an oil that you feel is healthy enough that if you're using it, you know, you're not gonna be grossed out. You know, I wouldn't wanna be soaking all this in corn oil, but avocado oil is just fine. Noodles are looking beautiful, by the way. Oh, hey, check this out. So, shout out to Gary Hart, one of my longtime subscribers. He gave me this like a year ago, a year and a half ago. He and his wife do uh, embroidery and maybe this cool, let's give it a try apron. So shout out to Gary and Ashia. Shout out to anybody that's watching from the Gamecock state of South Carolina. All right, folks, looking good. I'm gonna try to not do music on this video. So that's, you know, another one of the reasons why you hear me talking so much because we wanna make this exciting. And now we'll go down with some of that uh, greenery that we talked about, <laughs> I call it greenery, roughage. <laughs> All right, so that we just, uh, you know, it's not going to take much to get that to wilt, to wilt, <laughs> wilt, wilt. Um, I'm going to put that down there like so, mix it in. I don't even have a name for this. This is, you know, every stir fry dish I make is 100% unique. We sort of kind of make this up as we go. Uh, next, we're going to go with Blackstone Sesame Teriyaki. I'm loving this stuff. Um, hey, if I can talk more about that, you know, uh, this was always my go-to teriyaki sauce. It's actually the first bottle, Mr. Yoshida's, that I bought in a long time. I love it. I think when it comes to teriyaki sauce, nobody can beat Mr. Yoshida's. That's a fact. So Blackstone came out with this a couple months ago. And what's cool about it is they didn't try to compete with Mr. Yoshida's or these other brands like Lachoy. It is a very unique sauce. It has um, it has the teriyaki aspect in there. You know, it has like the toasted sesame seeds, but it has like a touch of citrus in there. Just beautiful. I love it, and it's totally different. Here we go, Hannah. Totally different 
than Mr. Yoshida's. So if you're expecting Mr. Yoshida's, you're gonna be disappointed. But if you're expecting deliciousness, you are gonna be happy. Now there is a little bit of sugar in there. So put it right down on the griddle top. You'll see it caramelizing already. That sugar's caramelizing. We don't want it to burn on the griddle top necessarily, but we do like that, um, that caramelization to happen. We want it to get onto the noodles. I'm gonna grab a fork really quick. Here, I'll switch places with you. We're gonna cut into a piece of this chicken here. I'm at home, I can do whatever I wanna do, right? So that's, I'm just eyeballing things. Things look good. We're gonna grab some noodles. We're gonna grab a little veggie straight off the griddle top. If you're doing this at home, be careful. Uh, when you get food off a 500 degree griddle, it is hot. I think we got a little, um, hold on, we got a little, uh, here we go, a little grease on there. They're calling for possibility of anywhere between five and eight feet of snow. So that's insane. We'll see if it happens. Perfect. Okay. So, these are great. Stir fry dish number one complete. Now I'm choosing to do the 30 or the 28 inch griddle today. I could be on the 36. We could have multiple recipes going at the same time. But uh, you can have some fun today. No script at all. Nothing that drives me nuts more than having to script out my videos, which I have to do sometimes. But um, I'm going to put that there. We'll grab my griddle scraper over here. Kind of give this a quick clean. There is some of that teriyaki or um, the sugar from the sesame teriyaki on there. So, gonna kind of get that off the griddle top. I will then, let's see, move this over, get the rest of this clean. I'm, I'm choosing to throw that back in the grease cup there, so. All you people out there that are always complaining because food's going into the grease cup, I, I'm willing to throw a piece of chicken in there once in a while. Okay, now the griddle is pretty darn clean. It's sanitary. Okay, you're not going to have flavor transference. We're between five, six hundred degrees here, so the griddle top is completely cleaned off. I'm only using the water because when I use those sticky, sugary sauces. You definitely need some water to help you out. Uh, what do I want to do next, man? Let me think. I'm going to use some more of the avocado oil. Still recording? Yes. All right, sometimes this camera we're using gets a little weird when we get up uh, into the high numbers. And now we're going to throw down some organic ground beef. Come on, organic ground beef. There you go. I got me two new spatulas here. Okay. Inst instant sear, by the way, instant sear. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing. I've got some of those cloves of garlic, and we're gonna put a few cloves of garlic straight down in there, like shoe. Okay. You know what I need to do? While you're watching that, I'm gonna sneak over here and grab my warming rack. One second, how am I gonna get over there, Hannah? Bear with me. Let me crawl through here. Here, you can get a video of me crawl through. <laughs> Real life, friends. See, if I was doing one of my scripted videos, you wouldn't be seeing this. All right, so here we go. Can you take that? Grab it. Mm -hmm. All right. Coming back through. You're seeing me today in my real environment. I'm going to put this warming rack in the back here, like so. I'm going to see if we can set this up there. And now that first stir fry dish can essentially stay piping hot right there, okay? In fact, maybe I'll just turn it sideways. There we go. Now, I've got this whole side of the griddle over here to work with. That stir fry is going to still be delicious, okay? So we got that ground beef going down here. It's going to go in with a little bit of that Himalayan pink. I use them all. We use uh, sea salt, we use kosher salt. So a little bit of Himalayan pink. And immediately gonna go down with some broccoli. This is gonna be kinda like something along the lines of a, you know, a beef broccoli. 
kind of a dish and some of those sliced onions so hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing there okay Now one thing we can do here, let me move some things aside. Let's see if I can close the hood with that on there, Hannah. Pretty close, pretty close. So let's go ahead and grab some water. We're gonna put some water down here, get some heat, generate a little bit of steam, close the hood, and that'll help with the broccoli, help it to steam, help it to uh, start to cook better. Uh, oh, here we go, it's a little messy today. <laughs> but that's our brand new Blackstone Servant Store Adventure Ready cart in all of its beauty. And you can see my setup today, folks. I'm not hiding anything. If you look around here, show them, actually. Uh, you can see we have griddles everywhere. Uh, we have griddles here, griddles there. We have griddles stacked up. I have my smoker. This is a griddle that I was using for a video for Murdoch's Farm and Home. And just things everywhere. I just app here, some of the Blackstone tents that we use when I do shows or I film under the uh, back porch or on location. And this is one of my cabinets here where I store some of my other stuff. <laughs> so Blackstone stuff everywhere. And again, today it's all about having fun and celebrating our son's uh, birthday. And so we're not going with a pretty set. We're just having fun. All right, let's check it out. Okay. Looking good. It's looking really good, friend. Okay, so we're going to move that back there. I think with this one, we will go with rice. Uncle Ben's ready rice. You know me. I've been peddling this stuff for years. Come on, Uncle Ben's. Hook me up. Jasmine rice, okay? I say it every time. It says 90 seconds in the microwave. Don't ask me if you have to put it in the microwave. The griddle top is going to override any need for this to go into a microwave. It's cooked rice, and now we're going to get it cooking on the uh, Blackstone to get the color to infuse it with these oils and with the flavor of the meat. I buy this in a lot of different flavors. We buy it in long grain, we buy it in the Spanish rice, and you'll see me using this in a lot of our Blackstone cooking videos. It's always a little bit stuck together when you open it. See, you can break it, to, break it apart, <laughs> break it together, break it apart like that. And now, things are looking good here. I'm gonna mix this up. We're gonna take advantage of all the oils in that ground beef. I think it's 80-20 organic ground beef, okay? Take advantage of all those oils and also the uh, the avocado oil, which I might even add a little more of, by the way. That's the key to fried rice. You know, when you make, wanna make a good fried rice, you need to have a hot griddle and you need to have oil in some form in there, whether it's avocado oil, um, good green, butter, you know, olive oil. And the rice should be, you know, probably dry, not a wet, sloppy kind of rice. That rice is pre-cooked, so it's just perfect. Big advocate for the Uncle Ben's ready rice. So we're gonna let this cook for a few minutes, like so. I could have probably added more broccoli now that I look at it, but I think we'll finish this off with our sauce and maybe some green onion as well. So let's get the... Uh, Let's get the green onion on the, at the ready, and tell you what, let's put a little bit. Actually, that's the serrano. Let's do the serrano. Let's make a little, I'll call this a flavor cavern, a, the flavor hole. There we go. Some serrano in there just for a little bit of heat. All right. You don't need to have it if you're not into heat. This could have went down earlier with the garlic, but we're just going to get that going right now. There we go. Everything else is cooking just fine off the side. You can see the rice is definitely starting to get for what I would call fried rice consistency. It's sticking to the spatula. When you go to scrape it, it's slightly sticking to the griddle top. Oh, beautiful. It's going to start to get all those flavors. Let's go ahead and mix those serrano peppers up in that as well. Okay. Now, I'm going to taste the rice here in a second just to see where we're at. Should go ahead and show them what we have sitting over there, by the way. That was our first meal over there. So stir fry number one, that's gonna be super hot. We're not compromising texture or flavor. It's sitting up on the warming rack. It's still gonna be gorgeous. Let me grab a clean fork. 
and go in here and try some of this just to see where we're at. Got an onion in there. Let's grab a piece of broccoli. There we go. Ready? Be careful eating off a hot griddle. That's good. Okay. I noticed um, I think it might need just a touch more salt. So again, we'll go in there with the Himalayan pink. And now I think we'll go in there with the Mr. Yoshida's that we talked about earlier. Again, if you're just talking a straight teriyaki sauce, a soy kind of teriyaki sauce, the award definitely has to go to Mr. Yoshida's. Do not mess around with any of that La Choy or any of that junk on the market. My goodness. The Mr. Yoshida's is the way to go. There's not a week that goes by where I don't get a few messages from people telling me thank you for turning me on to that stuff. We're just giving you some different kinds of options here today. Okay, that's caramelizing straight away. We want to pull that off the griddle top. We'll kind of, our real estate's getting kind of taken up here. All right. We'll set that right there for now. Now, what I love, people ask me all the time, what are my favorite things to make on a Blackstone griddle? And stir fry, I think stir fry is the answer. We do it all, it's not fake. I cook what I like, whether it's a burger or a quesadilla. But I think stir fry is just great. You know, you feel semi-healthy when you're making it. You can put a huge assortment of vegetables in there as well. And I just love cooking it. Now let's see, where did I put my griddle scraper, Hannah? Here we go. Now we're gonna clean this up again, friends. Again, if I was on my own and I wasn't filming, I'd go ahead and you know scrape this all all up and put it in the um, in the serving platter. But we're in a hurry here, so we're gonna compromise and throw a few tablespoons of rice away. Okay. Again, teriyaki sauce. Once again, we're gonna have that issue with the sugar, so a little bit of water. You can see it caramelize, or it doesn't caramelize, it deglazes, and it pretty much uh, forces the sugar to the top of the griddle. And you can just put it aside like so, okay? But we're gonna get this all up here, and again, we got a 500, 600 degree griddle. So the next thing I cook on here isn't gonna taste like teriyaki. I mean, it burns off instantly, okay? But we're just going to make sure we get all that sugary junk off the griddle. Get all that food residue. Grab some paper towels. Okay. Like so. Pretty clean. Now we'll go in with a little bit of avocado oil. Thanks, Hannah. All right, avocado oil in there. And we're going to finish up with a little vegetarian dish. This will be one... Uh, we can give us have an, another option. So this one we're gonna start with yellow bell pepper We're gonna go in with red bell pepper, okay? Uh, I think this one will do snow peas as well. Let's do them all in there snow peas as well uh, Let's do red onion that looks beautiful And I forgot the garlic again. So the garlic right there at the beginning uh, We have the oils in there See if I have any spatulas laying around here. I always like to have two when I'm doing stir fry. There we go. There's a set of spatulas. Gorgeous color. For me, that's what it's all about with stir fry, folks. Now I have stuff stacked everywhere. We're just kind of showing off today. We're doing this birthday party, but look at this. That's where we're at so far. Look at these two different kinds of stir fry. My goodness, we're gonna take this in the house in just a minute so everybody can enjoy it. Now we're not looking to get these like a fajita veggie. Um, you know, there's different levels of how far you can cook a vegetable. Think about like in fajitas, you'd want these onions to be, you know, sort of mm, soft, <laughs> right? But we want a little crunch in these. Now, we don't want them to be raw. We want them to, you know, have nice color, but we want them to be crunchy. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're going back with the, uh, the Himalayan pink salt. And then since we had them out, we're going to go straight back into the udon as well.
There we go. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. It's one of my um, things that I enjoy doing the most at the griddle is doing these real-time videos, just showing people how easy it is. Sure, I chopped up all my veggies off camera, right? Because you didn't need to stand here for 30 minutes and watch me chopping everything up. But just to give you an idea just how much fun it is, there really is a joy in griddling. It's the whole reason why my YouTube channel exploded. I mean, all glory to God, he did it, but people are excited about griddle uh, and griddle cooking. And that's what we're doing here. Look at that. Just look at those gorgeous colors, okay? And I don't think I'm gonna keep you guys forever. Let me just show you what we got here. So we have the vegetarian stir fry we're working on here. Here we have our little, um, our, uh, our broccoli beef kind of dish. And there's our first one that finished up. You can see it's still steaming on the warming rack. We're gonna go in the house and serve it up. So one last look at this. In fact, let me get a picture of it. Yeah, let's see if we can get some good pictures of it here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let me get some close-ups here, Hannah. And then one last, here's a hand to smile for me. This is our, uh, all right, folks. So that's it for today. Uh, I just wanted to uh, leave you with a video. Haven't done a video in a week or so, so why not? We're gonna do the same thing here, and we're done. We're gonna finish, we're gonna ask Hannah what we wanna put on this one. This one might end up with Korean sweet fire. It might end up with sesame teriyaki. It might end up getting finished with some sesame seeds. It might end up getting finished with some Mr. Yoshida's. But that's it for now, folks. Uh, I don't have room to stack any more plates. We're gonna start serving up food. So until next time, I appreciate you watching. Praise the Lord and pass the stir fry. The family's in the house eating, and I've got yet a fourth stir-fry recipe going here right now. What do you think of that? Mm.